We are on the beach of Barcelona and the city is right there. One of my favorite cities in all of Europe. And we're gonna take you on a full day of eating throughout the city and uh, let's just go. At the end of our cruise series, we stayed a couple of days in Barcelona, Spain. What better way to escape the harsh German winter than to go south, am I right? Just look at the blue sky, the beaches and all the sunshine. But before we can enjoy the midday sun, we are starting this ultimate Barcelona street food tour with some of the best breakfast items we have ever found. We passed Gaudi's famous La Sagrada Familia in search for a very special Spanish breakfast item and oh boy did we find a good one. Good morning, so we made it out here in Barcelona at this mild winter day. We are getting breakfast and what better way to start off the day with potatoes, two ways. We came to this place called La Granota and Co. It's uh, pretty central, close to the La Sagrada Familia. We ordered two dishes. This here is tortilla de patata. It's a Spanish omelette made with potatoes and eggs mainly. And we have two versions, one with jamón y queso, which is ham and cheese, and then the classic one over here with just onions on top, cebolla. cebolla. Phil's just gonna put the cebolla onion one on his plate. This is a classic one. So this one is very soft, as you can see, it's a lot of potatoes in there, then mixed with egg, baked in a pan, and they actually have a bunch of different variations of those here. But I think this is the classic one with just onions. So. Bro. That is the best one I've ever had. I had a lot of them from the supermarkets and other places. And Diana made them at home a bunch of times too. But this one is so flavorful. Oh my God, look at it. It's just glistening in the sun, the light. It has this light char from the pan in there. And it's basically tasting like a very good pan of fried potatoes, added egg and a little bit of cheese. And oh my God. 10 out of 10 start for me. This is the best thing in the world. And then they were so nice to add this uh, bread here and I think this is called pan a tomaquet. I think means bread with tomato on it and it's kind of like the Spanish or Catalan version of bruschetta. This is a Catalan dish and it's olive oil with tomato on top of it and it's nicely pressed. Very nice. This one's cold and it's very refreshing. Buenos dias. Um, I'm utilizing my middle and high school Spanish here. <laughs> Struggling a little bit. So here we have a tortilla de patata, jamón y queso. So you can see the ham and cheese on there. And I just personally love ham and cheese. Tortilla de patata I think is more of a morning thing and they have so many. There are tuna fish ones, there are cheese ones. There are just a lot of different variations of it here. And I'm gonna give this one a try. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, that's so good. Oh, the potatoes are so tender. Yeah. They just melt in your mouth, but they're still strong enough to hold their form. And then the egg covered over it. I feel like this is the best way to start a breakfast. You have protein that's from the I'm eggs saying. and then you have potatoes. It's like a cake. Look at that beautiful layers glistening. Mm. This is a 10 out of 10. I'm so happy. Right? My God. Mm. The beauty of a potato. I like them both. They are great. I think I like the onion one a little better for some reason. Awesome. We thought about ordering just one and I'm so glad we did not. I can't believe it. That was amazing. Starting the day out with potatoes is incredible. But if you prefer your breakfast rather sweet than savory, don't worry. Barcelona has you covered. So if you're not into the savory version of breakfast, there's also a sweet version of breakfast with awesome bakeries and pastries that you can find everywhere. So we're here in the Gothic Quarter area with these small, narrow, beautiful streets. And I wanted to start with something that I love. It's a Catalan pastry. So it's from this area of Spain. It's called Suxo and it's filled with cream. It's this beautiful deep fried dough. Mm, smells so nice. Mmm. This would be so dangerous if I lived here. <laughs> I'd be tempted to do this all the time. Well, deep fried dough filled with custard, is it good? It's amazing. <laughs> and it's a decent amount of filling. Wow. I hate when you get something and it's not filled enough, but this is a beautiful ratio of filling, a nice cream smooth, and then this nice lightly fried outside and a decent amount of sugar, <laughs> as you can see. I love custard. That is, oh, 
My all-time favorite donut is a Boston cream donut, and this has that nice cream taste on it. All it's missing is a little bit of chocolate on top. Another one we had to get was an Ensalmada. It's this beautiful dough with powdered sugar on top. This one is not filled, it's normal. I think what makes this unique is it's cooked with pork lard, pork fat. It's from Mallorca. Yeah, Mallorca. It's just a nice, fluffy, light thing. Let's give it a try. It's so light. It's like air. Like if you put this into your coffee, it would just disappear. <laughs> it does have a little bit of mm. a savory note in there, actually, the after after you get through the powdered sugar. No, not bad. And the last item we have here is a coca, coca crema, which we Googled and it's apparently also a very common dessert dish here. It looks very nice. This is actually from the fridge, so it's cooled and they had these long sheets, these full trays of them, and she cuts it off actually by weight. This one is 26 euro per kilogram, but it's so light. This was also 1 euro 40. There's crema catalan in there, like another custard type of cream that is very popular around the area. And it's this like sheet layered little pastry. It looks very delicate. And I feel like this has got to burst into a thousand pieces yes, now that I bite, bite into it. that. Oh, that's a nice crunchiness to mm. it. Okay. Mm. It has this like candied flavor to it, like a crunchy caramel. It's very nicely roasted and then filled with cream. That's quite nice. Which one's the best? Mm. They're a little different. The cream is the same, but this one has a nicer, sweeter, more sophisticated taste to it. Where this feels like the the cheap version if you just want a lot of it. Are you saying my taste is no, juvenile? They're absolutely great both. Juvenile. By the way, we get all three of these items from a patisserie called Villa Mala. Very good, very good, all three of them. Very fresh and I absolutely love it. Rounding up breakfast, the city absolutely nailed it. And with Xuxos, we found a new personal favorite. Wandering the city's beautiful streets, you will notice many options for quick snacks between the bigger meals, including lots of sandwiches or bocadillos. Since it's still kind of breakfast time, we went to a place called Plasoa. It's a hamoneria, so it's basically a ham specialty shop. And as you all know, Spain is known for Serrano ham, and even better, jamón ibérico, the Iberian version of the Serrano ham. And you can tell by the darker color. We got this big sandwich here. I think they call it a bocadillo. Everywhere in Spain, in the bigger cities, you go around and you see shops with these big sandwiches. This one is Iberian ham, the slightly darker version. As a good amount of fat on it and has a very strong distinct smell and taste to it so oh no i dropped the piece oh god adios mio this big sandwich was 590 and i'll just see how good that thing is pretty standard baguette like you can find it in spain everywhere also france germany whatever but the ham is what it makes it so special like check this out there's a slight layer of this tomato based sauce on it and then these slices you can tell you can see the marble the structure of the meat in there and there's always big pieces of fat in there dude i love that taste very distinct strong flavor you have to try it to know it and it's one of the main things I love about Spain whenever we come here. I have to get baguette, serrano ham and guacamole from the shops and then have it at the apartment at all times. I eat this stuff all that time. It's so good. If a massive bocadillo seems too daunting, tapas may be the way to go. They come in many shapes and sizes and we wanted to test a very budget-friendly tapas chain that mainly offers tiny versions of the bocadillo called montaditos. We came to a place for lunch called 100 Montaditos. Everything here comes on this little bread roll. And on a Wednesday or on a other day of the week, I think it's Sunday or something, they're just one euro. So each of these was one euro. They're not the fanciest, as you can see. Not that many ingredients on one, but they're cheap. And I think if you're just out for a quick budget vibe, they're probably pretty decent. Actually fairly flavorful. This one is a little spicy. They uh, sprinkle a couple of chips on there and all the dessert ones also come on a bread roll like this nutella one this chain is everywhere throughout spain we've seen it it's a very budget version of tapas there's a hundred different options on there and you can just choose one this one has some nice bacon chunks in there and i'll just give it a try surprisingly better than it looks it's not amazing but the bread is actually softer than the one we had earlier so it's not that great but I feel like what it has going for it is the price yeah. and the ease of accessing it. If you're hungry and you need a little snack, it's good. Don't expect the most amazing thing though. Yeah. 
Aside from the food, we want to point out how gorgeous Barcelona really is. We visited Gaudi's La Pedrera or Casa Mia, where you can walk on a rooftop above the city that seems to be straight out of a fairy tale. We also took a trip up to Tibidabo, a mountain with stunning views above the city. So this right here is one of the things I really like about Barcelona. The whole city is right there and obviously it's right on the coast, the Mediterranean is right there. But then this is like, it gets hilly immediately. That's also where the city can grow. Wow, this looks actually so crazy right now. You can see it exactly. This amusement park up here is one of the oldest amusement parks in the world that is still operating with the original stuff. And it was built at the end of the 19th century, like 1896 or eight or something like that. Crazy. So it's kind of like 120 years old. So that Ferris wheel and this weird tower that is here in the back, I think um, that's still the original stuff. I would hope they maintained that in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, I'm not brave oh. enough to try it out though. Yeah, but that's one of the selling points here. That's one of the oldest amusement Parks. Yeah, but check out these views. Look at that mountains on either side. There's Barcelona and then you have these little things down here. Some more of the amusement park and these trees that Phil really likes. These tall long ones. He says they feel very, very Mediterranean. This plane here goes right over this cliff and you can ride it. I'm not doing that. Barcelona has so many faces and for our next street food snack, we made it deep into the old Gothic quarter. So we moved over to the Gothic quarter of Barcelona with all of these quaint streets. They're so cute. There's a lot of shopping, there's a lot of stores, there's a lot of restaurants as well, plenty of tapas. And we decided to get a classic here, patatas bravas, so spicy potatoes here. I think Phil will be drooling behind the camera. There's this restaurant called Patapas and it had pretty good ratings, so we decided to get one to go, para lleva. And here we have it. Look at these spicy potatoes. They're just these beautifully cubed fried potatoes and then you have a spicy sauce on top. This looks like a spicy mayonnaise going on. I love mayonnaise, so I'm happy. You have a little bit of fried onions and greens on top too, but we're just gonna give this beautiful little guy a try. Mm, so good. I know Phil is gonna love this one, <laughs> but I feel like this is just an awesome appetizer or takeaway meal or snack in general. We really can't go wrong with fried potatoes and mayonnaise, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, I think I like the way Barcelona works. A lot of potatoes and a lot of sandwiches. For this bowl, we paid four euro 90, which is not too bad, like kind of like the standard tapas price. It's a pretty decent portion too. <laughs> it's just like a thick French fry. Maybe a Spanish fry, no, you know? More like a potato wedge. It's yeah. so potato y potato inside. Wedges. I love it. It's a little bit of seasoning on the crust and then the spicy mayonnaise. Just, oh my God, man. You can eat potatoes all day, all different types of forms. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The potato fill eating potatoes. Mm. Eight out of 10. This video is going to become eating potatoes in Spain. <laughs> Bro, patatas bravas. Can't go wrong. And now. We discovered this little nerd heaven shopping district in the heart of the Gothic Quarter. There's Harry Potter shops, anime shops, it's amazing. One of the most overrated anime of all time, no good. On a big market. Wow, look at all the meat. So we made it over here to a market. It's a wet market along with a lot of fruits and food as well. And it's called the Mercado de la Bocaria. And we decided to get some empanadas. This is a spinach empanada here. It looks very nice. Something I haven't tried here yet on this trip, but it's definitely a common thing we've had in general. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Mm. 
I'm eating my hair. <laughs> Yummy. So empanadas are these beautifully pastry pocket things and they're filled with savory and sweet options, normally savory. Anything from like ham and cheese to cheese to vegetable mix in there. But I really like spinach options, nice. I also got an empanada. This one is uh, chorizo and queso. So chorizo, ham and cheese. Chorizo is also very normal, very standard and traditional for this area in Spain or in Spain in general. It's just this type of sausage that they make from pork and it's very strongly flavored. You can get it as an empanada filling as well, obviously. Yeah, it's a minced meat filling. Look at cheese in there. Mm. It's almost like the Spanish bacon version that is just a little spicy, like spicy bacon sausage. Very typical street food. Quick snap, grab it, go out, shove it in my mouth and be happy like this. Mm. Exactly. So we went to another stand. We got another classic. I think these are very unique to the Catalonia area. These little things here are croquetas and we got three different ones. Just gonna try it. Just a deep fried cheese bacon, basically. Oh, that's the cheese one. Wow. Yeah, it looks like the mm. cheese one. That looks so good. That's like a blue cheese. Really? It's, yeah, dude, it's very strong. Yeah, I was gonna try the blue cheese one. Mmm. Yeah. That is blue cheese. My ham and cheese one. Very different, also very good. I like it. And then last one, there should be one with mushrooms. It's just another dough, a little darker color, a little greenish. That might be a piece of a mushroom in there. You know when people deep fry stuff, often it just tastes like deep fried, you know, like oily batter. Here, every taste comes out very strongly. Whoa, the mushroom flavor really does come out. It's not like the fry and the oil is overpowering it at all. Mmm, these are awesome. Croquetas, everything deep fried, mm. but very tasty. And if I look at this market, man, there's so many of these different shapes of empanadas in any size and form. Oh, it's, there's so many options. Meat, vegetable ones. Oh my God, this is like foodie heaven. Like I could just eat myself to death here. So this Mercado de la Boqueria, it's highly recommended. It's super nice, especially now that it's getting dark, all the lights are out, the stands are looking super epic. And on top of that, it was Christmas time over here, so it's a little more decorated than normal, I think. Very yeah. nice to just go around and stroll around and try everything. Yeah, I would eat so much more if we hadn't already eaten so much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have eaten a lot, but there's always something else to try. And one highlight was yet to come the next morning. So as the sun comes out, we're making our way to the Barceloneta neighborhood, which is closer to the beach in the south of Barcelona. And uh, we're going there because we're going for one specific tapa. And some critics say it's the most known tapa of the city. It originated actually in this area and potentially in the restaurant where we're going to. It might be the thing I'm looking forward to the most in this video. Yeah, I'm excited too. Can yeah. you buy me a yacht? Sure, look at all these <laughs> nice boats here in the background. Uh, the marina is also very integrated in the city. We've got palm trees on that side. But the, the tapa or the food that we're looking for might be the bomb if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and can we please take a moment to appreciate the blue sky and sunshine? I mean, this is the deepest winter and as bad as the weather gets here. People are actually utilizing the beach and even the water. I'm not jealous. After all, Northern Europeans keep telling us there's no such thing as bad weather. But yeah, uh, time for the legendary tapas. I'm so excited. I just went into this little shop at the square right behind us. It's called La Cova Fumada and I just got two Bombas. These are called bombas. These are little tapas. They are mashed potatoes with minced meat and then deep fried. You put aioli and spicy sauce on top of it. And this shop, La Cova Fumada, is where they originated. And now they're very famous throughout Barcelona and I would assume in the area or maybe all of Spain. I just talked to the owner and I asked him, is this where they originated? And he's like, yeah, my grandma made them. <laughs> yeah. And these are the authentic ones, he says. So oh, be careful, they're very one soft. Each, but they look amazing. Look at that thing, a little coat of Alioli on it, aioli and the uh, spicy cream. Here we go, bombas, let's see. Wow. Mm, spicy. That garlic comes out nice and strong. So I'm gonna get a bite here. You don't really see, see much of the minced meat in there, um, but there's a little bit. It is deep fried mashed potatoes it's with a garlic mash mayonnaise on top, deep. aioli. Again, it's potato, it's a mashed potato, I like it. So good. The spicy sauce is actually spicy. 
Yeah, it's proper spicy. And the aioli is nice garlicky. Overall, it works very well together. This reminds me of something that after Thanksgiving, after deep frying a turkey, you would take the mashed potatoes and then make little balls and deep fry them, or at least my family did in the US, but these are awesome. Very nice. I give that a nine out of 10. I mm. love it a lot. That shop, I highly recommend coming here because the area in general is worth visiting. You have the beach right there. Yeah, we're so close to the beach. And that shop is tiny. It has these two doors there, only a tiny sign on top, but it's popping. It was so full. It must be like a local legend here. It feels like a restaurant out of a movie. There's just a little bar, people standing, drinking coffee. It's pretty cool. Yeah, typical tapas bar here in Barcelona. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, this is so good. Mm, I love it. Bomba. That's it. That was our food tour here from the city of Barcelona. To be honest, one of my favorite cities in the whole wide world. Me too. And if you want to see more from Barcelona or behind the scenes stuff in general, check out our patreon.com slash Diana and Phil for more videos. Yes. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. This is the type of weather I'm talking about. It is December right now. Blue skies, beach, mountains there, little doggos. This is perfect. Look at this. Beautiful.